Wave your hands if you can hear me. That's right, wave your hands above your head if you're ready for a story hunt today. Now, touch your head. Put both hands on top of your head. Okay, uh, scratch your armpits. Scratch your armpits like you're a cheeky monkey. Right, pat your head and rub your tummy at the same time. Tricky, isn't it? Pat your head and rub your tummy. Well done. Happy face. Sad face. Happy face. Sad face. Angry face. Silly face. Hello and welcome to our story hunt today. A story hunt is a cross between a scavenger hunt and a traditional storytelling. We are going to play a game. I am going to give you 10 seconds to find an object. That object might be big or small, weird or wonderful, but it has to be blue. You have 10 seconds to find a blue object and bring it back to the screen. Off you go. 10, nine, Eight, go and find a blue object. It could be a food packaging or maybe a toy. It could be a piece of clothing, a cushion, a pillow. It doesn't matter what it is, but it's got to be blue and it's got to be back here in seven, six, five, four, coming back to the screen in three, two, one, and back to the screen with your blue object now. Well done. Let's try a different colour. This time, I'd like you to find something orange. Off you go. Ten, nine, oh, you've got the idea. Quick as you can. Eight, seven, six, find that orange object and get back to the screen as quickly as you can. Five. Four, three, coming back to the screen with your orange object in two, one, and come back to the screen. Well done. Okay, first time I asked for something blue, second time I asked for something orange. This time, I'd like you to bring me something green back to the screen. Off you go. Ten. Nine, eight, go and find that green object as quickly as you can. Seven, six, five, hurrying back to the screen in four, three, two, one, and bring your green object back to the screen now. Well done, story hunters. Parents, carers, people in charge, Thank you for switching on our video today. If your story hunter is enjoying adding to their story stash, why not take a photo and send it along with any feedback you might have to your library service. You can find out more about events and activities happening through your local library by visiting their website or following them on social media. Thank you for your support. Right, let's get story hunting. Stand up on the spot where you are. Whether you're in your kitchen, your bedroom, your bathroom, if you're on the toilet, this could be a bit tricky. Stand up on the spot where you are. Ready to march after three. Let's go. One, two, three. Cha, 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 cha. Are you marching? Cha, 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 cha. We're going on a story hunt. We're going to the library. We're super excited. But what will the story be? Can you do that with me? Of course you can. Wherever you're watching our video today, stand up on the spot where you are, ready to march and do the actions together. Here goes. One, two, three. Cha, 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 cha. 
lecture. We're going on a story hunt. We're going to the library. We're super excited. But what will the story be? Well, today on our story hunt, we are going to have a snowball fight. You have got 10 seconds to find your winter clothes. That might mean a bobble hat, a scarf, gloves or a coat. In 10 seconds time, come back to the screen wearing your outdoor winter clothes. Off you go. 10. I've got a hat with me. 9. And I'm going to wear my really long scarf. 8. This very long scarf. 7. There I am. I'm sorted. 6. How are you getting on at home? 5. Hurry up. Come back to the screen in 4. Three, do your coat up, put your gloves on, stick your hat on in two, one, and come back to the screen. Well done, right. I've got my hat, I've got my scarf. Now I need to sort out my snowballs for our snowball fight. That might mean finding some paper to screw up into balls. Maybe some socks could be balled up ready to throw. Maybe you've got some soft balls, but do be careful if you're going to throw them later in our session. We don't want anything getting broken. You've got 10 seconds. Go and find something that could be a snowball in our story hunt. Off you go. 10. Right, I've got some paper. I'm going to rip it into small balls. 8, 9, 8. I've got lots of paper here. Seven. I've also got some cotton wool, which I'm going to break up into balls so I can throw that safely inside. How are you getting on? Five. Four. Quickly finding your snowballs for our snowball fight later in three, two, one, and come back to the screen. Okay, so I've got my paper balls and I've got my cotton wool balls. I wonder what you found at home. Anyway, I think we're ready to go. Put your hand on the door handle. That's right, pretend to put your hand on the door handle. And after three, with me. Here we go. One, two, Three, out the door, Beep, bang, run for the bus, wait for me, onto the bus, the wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round, the wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, off the bus, bye, up the library steps, cha, 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 can you do that with me? Of course you can. Wherever you're watching this today, stand up on the spot where you are, ready to do the actions together after three. Here we go. One, two, three. Out the door. Beep, bang. Run for the bus. Wait for me. Onto the bus. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round. Off the bus, bye! Up the library steps, chuck, 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 chuck. Now, put one hand on the door handle, put the other hand on the door handle, and after three, we'll pull. One, two, three, pull! One, two, three, pull! One, two, three, ooh! Where are we? This doesn't look like any library I have visited before. Where are the books? Where are the computers? I think we should take a closer look. Hold your hands out in front of you and wiggle your fingers. That's right, wiggle your fingers. Now turn your hands into two large circles and push them together as if you're holding a pair of binoculars. Hold them up to your eyes as we look up and down, one way and the other. Can you do that with me? Of course you can. Hold your hands in front of you and wiggle your fingers. That's right, wiggle your fingers. Now turn your hands into two large circles 
and push them together as if they're a pair of binoculars. Now hold the binoculars in front of your eyes as we look up and down, one way and the other. We are in a frozen wilderness. It might seem strange, but animals do live in some of the coldest places on the planet. Those animals include birds, rabbits, foxes, deer and even bears who choose to live in places where the temperature rarely rises above freezing. It's a perfect place to play, but how can a story hunter be a wildlife hero in a frozen wilderness? You'd have to be very clever and very brave to find out. If you think that you are clever enough for our story hunt in one of the coldest places on the planet, scratch your chin and have an idea. That's right, scratch your chin and have an idea. If you think you're brave enough for our story hunt, flex your muscles like this, flex your muscles like this, and flex your muscles like this. So, if you think that you are clever enough for our story hunt, have an idea. And if you think you're brave enough, flex your muscles like this. And if you are ready to go story hunting in a frozen wilderness on the count of three, I want you to wave your hands above your head and shout yay so loudly. Everybody knows that we're story hunting today. Ready? One, two, three, yay! Well, in that case, I think we should go this way. Stand up on the spot where you are, ready to march. Off we go. Cha, 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 cha. Are you coming? Cha, cha, cha. This way, cha, cha, cha. This way, cha, cha, cha. Oh, the snow's getting much deeper here. We'll have to lift our feet up as we walk if we want to go much further. So, cha, cha. Chuck, lifting your feet as you walk. Chuck, chuck. I tell you what, this is tiring. Wipe the sweat from your brow as you go. So, chuck, chuck. Wiping the sweat away from your brow as we walk through the snow. Chuck, chuck. Wow, there's masses of white snow and ice as far as we can see. This is the perfect place for our snowball fight. But first, I think we should make some snow angels. Wherever you're watching today, stand up on the spot where you are and being careful of everyone and everything around you, stand like a starfish. That's right, stand like a starfish and sweep the snow down and sweep the snow up. Sweep the snow down and sweep the snow up. Brilliant snow angels, give yourself a pat on the back. Right, are you ready for a snowball fight? If you're ready for a snowball fight, on the count of three, I want you to wave your hands and shout yay so loudly. Everybody knows we're snowball fighting today. Here we go, so one, two, three, yay! Well, in that case, I'm going to give you five seconds to get ready. If there's somebody else with you today, maybe you can throw snowballs at each other, but be careful of things around you and people who might not want to play. Are you ready? So getting your snowballs together in five, four, Three, ready to throw your snowballs in two, one, and the snowball fight begins! Right, throw your paper, ready, aim, fire! Throw your socks, ready, aim, fire! Throw some paper, well done! Throw it at the screen, throw it at people in your room! Throwing paper and snowballs, and... 
Give yourself a pat on the back. That was a lot of fun. And do you know what? I feel a lot warmer for playing with snowballs here in one of the coldest places in the world because it's absolutely freezing here. Wrap your arms around you and give yourself a little hug because it's that cold. Do you know, this reminds me of a story about some animals who desperately wanted to get warm. So whilst you're recovering from our snowball fight, why not sit back in the chair, cushion or pillow where you've been watching today and I'll share that story with you. Long ago, when the world was still new and all the animals were finding their place within it, the sun would visit the animals for half of the year, bringing with it joy and warmth. But it, the other half of the year, it would go back to its home, leaving the animals in darkness they would be cold and miserable. And on one particularly cold and miserable day, the lion, who was the ruler of all the animals, called a meeting to discuss the cold. Rawr! Can you be a lion with me? Of course you can. Wherever you're watching this today, show me your lion claws, show me your lion faces, and let's hear those lion roars after three. One, two, three, and... Well done. Give yourself a pat on the back. And so, all of the animals came to the meeting in their different shapes, sizes, and forms. And among them was the crow, who at that time had dazzling rainbow-colored feathers and a sweet singing voice. She sang like this. La, 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 la. Do you think you could be the crow with me? Of course you can. Hold your hands up in front of you and wiggle your fingers. That's right, wiggle your fingers. Now push your thumbs together so that they are wings. And make your rainbow colored crow fly through the sky. And if you want to, and you're being very careful, you could stand up and you could make your crow fly around the room that you're watching in. Give yourself a pat on the back and sit down as the story continues. The lion roared. Are you ready to roar after three? One, two, three. Roar! I am cold. How will we get warm and see the sun again next year? The animals agreed that it was incredibly cold, but none of them could think how they could get warm. Then the owl, who was the wisest of the birds, hooted. One of us must fly to the sun and ask him to share his warmth. Well, this was a brilliant idea, but who would be courageous enough? Who would be brave enough for such a dangerous quest? The animals waited to see who would volunteer. The eagle? The falcon? The osprey, perhaps? But then the rainbow crow with her dazzling rainbow colored feathers began to sing. I will fly up to the sun. I will bring back his warmth. And with the thanks and praise of her friends ringing in her ears, the crow flew up above the trees, above the mountains, up into the sky 
and on towards the sun's palace. On and on the rainbow crow flew until she came to the place where the sun called his home. When she went inside, she bowed and sang to the sun. My animal friends are all cold. Please let us share your warmth. And the sun complained and the sun grumbled. But eventually he agreed to share his warmth with the animals. He gave the rainbow crow a branch of fire, a flaming torch to carry in her beak back to her animal friends. The crow thanked the sun and flew through the sky, past the mountains, past the trees, back to her friends. But as she flew, the flames blackened her feathers. And as she flew, the smoke robbed her of her sweet singing voice. So when she reached the animals, she was no longer a dazzling, colourful creature. She was an ugly black bird with a coarse, rasping cough. Ka! 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 And although the animals were grateful, the crow sat in a tree and wept for the beauty she had once been. But as she wept, she looked at her feathers and smiled to herself. For where the tears had fallen onto her feathers, they shimmered in the light, not black as you might expect, but all the colours of the rainbow. You see, Whilst her journey to the sun might have blackened her feathers and robbed her of her singing voice, she was still the beautiful, brave, courageous creature who'd flown up, up, up to the sun and brought back the warmth for her friends. You see, sometimes you shouldn't judge someone on their appearance. Sometimes it pays to look into their heart. Give yourself a big pat on the back and take a round of applause. Thank you so much for joining in the actions during our story. It's time for us to leave this frozen wilderness for the animals that live here and head back to somewhere a little bit warmer. But do you know what? Story hunters can be wildlife heroes by reducing the amount of energy they use at home. In simple ways like switching off light switches when they leave an empty room. In that way, the coldest parts of our planet will be protected so that the birds, rabbits, deer, foxes and bears that live there will be safe for now and the future. Once again, our story hunters have proved themselves very clever and very brave. And I look forward to joining you for another story hunt very soon. That's the end of our story hunt today. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. If you've taken any photos or have any feedback on our video, please send it to your library service. You can find out more about events and activities happening in your library this summer by visiting their website or following them on social media. For now, I'll look forward to seeing you for another story hunt very soon. Bye-bye!